Hello, Scott Stoddard here, and I'd like to welcome you to episode number four of my video series, Rants by Scott. My topic tonight in rant number four is going to be Splinter 26, my buddies, and their new cover song of Jefferson Airplane's White Rabbit. So let's get right on into that. First thing I'd like to do is take you back on a rewind. We're going to rewind all the way back to 1967. Now, 1967 was a very turbulent time here in the United States. A lot of social unrest going on, and a lot of it had to do with the war in Vietnam. Now, just a couple years before that, around 1964 or so, President Johnson had escalated things due to an incident in the Gulf of Tompkin. And uh, what happened was the resolution was passed before that, the United States involvement in Vietnam had been fairly minimal. It had been on more of an advisory type of uh, basis. But due to the incident in Gulf of Tonkin, the uh, American presence actually became boots on the ground. We had stepped up to about 500,000 men there by the summer of 1966. And the problem with that was things were not going well. It looked like we were not going to come out of this war with a victory. So let's go ahead to 1967, and a lot of interesting things happened. you got to understand the culture back then. Uh, gasoline was 33 cents a gallon there. One of the things that occurred that year was the very first heart transplant. Also, the very first automatic teller machine was invented right around that time. The first Super Bowl was held between the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs. And a lot of significant music events were going on. Now, culturally, you got to remember, 67 is when the Summer of Love happened. If you're not familiar with that term, it was pretty much the uh, beginning of the hippie movement. And a lot of this had to do with um, protests against the war in Vietnam. All right. The uh, culture then was starting to get fed up with the war. They were looking for more peace, love. Recreational drugs were a big thing. It was just coming into usage there. Summer of Love was a gathering of about 100,000 people in the Haight-Ashbury district in San Francisco in that summer of 1967. Now, along with this hippie culture, the drugs, the free love, came a lot of really good music. Now, right about that time, 1967, the Beatles had just released the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band album. And you had a lot of good American bands coming out. You had the Grateful Dead, the Birds, and what we're going to talk about here is Jefferson Airplane. So let's move on to a little bit of background on that song. The song was written by Grace Slick in around 1966. Now at that time, it wasn't even Jefferson Airplane. She was in a band called The Great Society, which I didn't even know that. That's why I love to research these things. But I wanted to bring you that little bit of information. It appeared, uh, the song White Rabbit appeared on Jefferson Airplane's album Surrealistic Pillow in 1967. The song was a pretty good breakthrough hit for the airplane. They made it to number eight on the Billboard Top 100 charts that year with the song. Now, lyrically, Grace wanted to kind of send a message. This, she loosely based this upon Lewis Carroll's book, Alice in Wonderland, who was written about 100 years before that in the 1860s. A lot of uh, fantastic imagery. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that. But Grace was read this book uh, when she was a kid by her parents. So she kind of got a little caught up in the drug references that were present. And they're not overtly present in Alice in Wonderland, but they tied into what was going on in her mind and in the society. She made this song as kind of a slam against parents who would read to their kids that kind of book. So it was kind of like her own type of personal protest. Naturally, there was an acid trip by Grace Lake that was involved that helped for formulate the correlation between Alice in Wonderland drug usage and some of the images that you'll see and we'll get to this in a little while, but there's some wonderful artwork that the artists in uh, Splinter 26 have given me to help show what they're talking about. And there's an image of a hookah smoking caterpillar, which is part of the lyrics of the song. There's Alice when she's 10 feet tall. These are all drug references. 
And the thing about that, this is kind of interesting, you know, you can't just overtly, especially in the late 1960s, put drug references in your song and expect your song to make it on the radio. So there was a little bit of kind of this playful wording in Grace's songs, the way she formulated the lyrics. It didn't really quite hit the censors as being overt drug references, and that's how this song became a hit single on the radio. Let's move ahead and talk about Splinter 26 a little bit. Now, Splinter 26 is a band. They are basically online, although the core of the band lives together in the area of Long Island, New York. Uh, that would be Deborah Crevo as lead vocalist and her husband, Brian. We have uh, Joe Verdi on the bass guitar. And now for this album, not, uh, excuse me, for this song, we have a special guest appearance by a guy named Ray Scott. And I think Ray Scott's from Arizona, somewhere around the Phoenix area. Fantastic uh, guitarist and musician. Been involved in lots of good music for a lot of years. I've followed Ray myself. I've also had the pleasure of working with Deb, Brian, Joe in another project you may have heard of or may not have heard of, but it was called this Conspiracy Theories Project. You'll see a couple of their videos here on my channel. But one of the biggest driving forces behind Splinter 26 is a guy that's not on Long Island. He's out in New Mexico, and that would be Sed Denau. Sed writes the majority of the songs that Splinter 26 did. They put together an album, a self-titled album called Splinter 26, two years ago. I believe Sed wrote all the material on that. It's a really good album up. I will include the link for that album down below in the description here on this video. Um, on their first album, they also had a uh, second bass player that did some of the bass work there, and that was Joe Viviani. Joe is still involved in the project, although he didn't play on this song. This was Joe Verdi playing on this. And Joe V, Joe V, doesn't matter. He's just They're interchangeable. Just joking, guys. Splinter 26 is on Spotify. They're on Facebook. I invite you to go check out their pages. I will put those links down below in the description to this song. All right, so Splinter 26 is Deborah Crevo on lead vocals. She does one hell of a job. Let me tell you, I've had the pleasure of the, doing the Conspiracy Theories Project with her. She's a fantastic vocalist. And what she's done here on this song, she did a great job emulating the feel and emotion conveyed by Grace Slick on the original. Her husband, Brian, plays drums for the band, also does all the audio production, mixing, mastering, the whole works. Brian has a fantastic studio in his house in Long Island. I've been there. Believe me, the guy does an awesome job. He's got a really authentic feel on this particular song. He took a lot of painstaking time to recreate the original reverb hall, hall room reverb effects. I'm not sure. You'll have to ask Brian. But uh, he's done a really good job as to keeping this real and authentic in the original feel from Jefferson Airplane. They went out of their way and did a fantastic job with this. Now we got Ray Scott, who played lead guitar on this song. Ray's a talented guitarist. I, I don't mean to say talented. Ray, Ray has put in a ton of work. I think the word talented is a little overrated. You know, and it gets thrown at musicians a lot. Oh, you're so talented. Well, these guys are talented musicians, but let's really give them their due and respect. They have put in their work. They have practiced their craft for years and years and years. They've practiced. They've learned about in uh, Brian's case, he's learned about audio engineering. Brian's a car mechanic by trade, all right? He does this part-time for fun, and he does a hell of a job. We got Joe Verdi on the bass guitar on this song. Joe's a fantastic bass player. I always loved working with Joe. You give him a song, he nails it. It sounds like the original. He did a great job. And Sed Dinalo is on rhythm guitar on this song. Sed always does a fantastic job. He's a solid guitar player. Sed says he doesn't play lead. That's a lie. I've heard him play. The guy can play. He's a really good musician. So, as I said, Brian did the mix and master at Corpor Studios at his house in Long Island. He's got the full setup there. He's got a very extensive setup, and he does a good job. The artwork and um, video here, I'm going to run a little clip right after here in a second. I'm going to give you a little bit of their video for this song. 
But the artwork and the video were all put together by Seth also. Seth has put in a ton of work on this project and he, as I said with all of Splinter 26 all the way through. So before we get to the video clip, I want to remind you that Splinter 26's links are down here in the description underneath the video. I want you to check them out. They're on Spotify. They're on Sed Dana's YouTube channel. You can go watch their video. As I'll, I will end screen link this video to that so you can go check it out from there, right from here if you want. I invite you to go listen to it. I think they've done a fantastic job reproducing this song with a lot of authenticity. So... Without any further wasting of your time, let's get on to the video clip. And I want to thank you for tuning in. Rant number four by Scott. Hit me up. Subscribe. Ring the bell for further notifications on any of my new content. All right. I want to thank you for tuning in. Y'all have a good night. Take care of yourselves. We're going to get through this. Best wishes. And we'll talk to you soon.